Qualifying for the Austrian Grand Prix is over and it is Max Verstappen on pole position. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a data analysis from qualifying. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top five teams later on, which is Aston Martin, Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari, and Red Bull. So stick around for that. Yep, Grand Prix qualifying is over, and it is yet another pole position for Max Verstappen, as the times came thick and fast after a sprint qualifying, which didn't actually have that much on track running when compared to today. And you can see how much more running there was in main Grand Prix qualifying as we look at all of the times set by Max Verstappen. With this, you can see how the circuit really evolved during the session. Even though the circuit is short, the time still evolved by 1.7 seconds, which around a 64 second lap is incredible. Usually, we compare the laps from the first lap in Q1 to the fastest lap in Q3. However, for today, I'm actually going to be comparing the fastest lap from SQ3 yesterday to Q3 from today to see how the times changed between sprint qualifying and main qualifying. And when you look at these two laps, they're actually very similar. The first main area where there is a big change is on the exit of turn three here. Here, Verstappen going into the braking zone loses a bit of time, but then he manages to get a much better exit and carries that advantage all the way down the straight. The next area where Verstappen gains time is going into the penultimate corner as he can carry a lot more speed. At the apex, Verstappen in Grand Prix qualifying carried 7 kilometers per hour more at the apex than he did in sprint qualifying and then at the final corner, Verstappen carried 9 kilometers per hour more speed and was full throttle a lot sooner. This together came to a lap time improvement of 0.35 seconds. So we've seen how the times evolved during sessions, but how did the top speeds compare from yesterday to today? Well, let's take a look at the top speeds from yesterday. As we saw, Red Bull were by far the fastest cars in a straight line, and Alpine and Sauber were the two slowest cars. But let's now take a look at the top speeds from today's qualifying, and how do they compare? Well, what we can see here is that it looks like most of the teams have actually increased their straight line speed performance, apart from Aston Martin, as they were still only able to do 320 kilometers per hour. Alpine was still the slowest car in a straight line, as they only reached 317 kilometers per hour, but Red Bull were once again the fastest car in a straight line, along with Haas, as they were able to reach 324 kilometers per hour. This might be because of circuit conditions improving, leading to them being able to get better traction on the exit of corners, and they use that to reach a higher top speed overall. Once again, showing how the circuit changed from yesterday to today for qualifying with circuit evolution. So we've seen how the top speeds compared, but the question is then today in the midfield, who impressed and who was looking good? Well, for me, the team that really impressed in qualifying was Haas, as Nico Hulkenberg finished in 9th place today, and teammate Kevin Magnussen was able to qualify in 12th place, and for Haas, this was a very impressive performance. But how did the Hulk end up in 9th place? Well, let's compare his time to Esteban Ocon from Q3, and when you look at these two times, you can see that Ocon was just not clean in the final qualifying session. Going into turn 1, as expected, the Haas car was faster in a straight line. But also, Ocon going into turn 3 made a mistake, going a little bit too deep. He then doesn't get a great exit either, and Hulkenberg continues to open the gap. Then going into the final two corners, Hulkenberg carries more speed into the corners, and Ocon ends up half a second down on Hulkenberg. In the race tomorrow, I expect a great fight between Alpine and Haas in the battle to be the top midfield team as Aston Martin seem to have fallen back as the weekend has gone on. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, it was a disastrous day in qualifying as Fernando Alonso was 15th and Lance Stroll qualified down in 17th place, which is even worse than where they were in sprint qualifying. The Aston Martin car is just massively lacking pace and they look like they don't have much grip in many areas. Let's now compare the fastest time set by Fernando Alonso in Q2 and compare it to Esteban Ocon's best lap from Q2 to see how Alonso missed out on getting into Q3. 
Going into turns one and turn three, you can see that Alonso is faster in a straight line, which is what we would expect. But going into turn three itself, Alonso has to break sooner as the Aston Martin just does not look hooked up at all. And then going into the medium to high speed downforce sections, you can see that the Alpine can just carry more speed. The Aston Martin is just lacking grip in these conditions. This tells me that Aston Martin really could be the eighth fastest car this weekend and points seem like nothing more than a distant dream for them. For Mercedes, George Russell qualified in third place as he pulled everything from the Mercedes car and teammate Lewis Hamilton was just a tenth behind him but qualified in fifth place. For Mercedes, this was a solid day. I'm not sure how they will get on in the race as I still expect them to be behind Ferrari, but at least today was a success. Let's compare the times that Carlos signs in the Ferrari to George Russell to see how Russell just had the edge over the Ferrari driver. And when you look at these two laps, you can see that they were actually very, very similar laps. Going into turn one, Russell was a little bit harder on the brakes and he lost a little bit of time. And this gave Sainz the edge. But then in turn three, Russell got a better run. And then for the rest of the lap, Sainz actually starts to close back up slowly. And by the final corner, Sainz was ahead but Russell got a better run through that final corner. In the race tomorrow, I expect both Ferraris to have the edge over Mercedes, and I don't think we are going to see another Merc on the podium this weekend. For McLaren, Lando Norris once again was the closest driver to Max Verstappen in the Red Bull, and we will be comparing those two laps later on, so please do stick around for that. Teammate Oscar Piastri was close to being right next to Norris on the grid, However, a track limits violation put an end to any opportunity that he had. In the race tomorrow, I expect Piastri to struggle when it comes to race distances. He had the edge in the sprint, but it is usually because he doesn't have to look after the tyres like he does when it comes to a race distance, and that is where Piastri still struggles. For Norris, it's going to be interesting to see if he can race Verstappen for longer than a few laps. If he can, then there is a chance that he could beat him, but I'm not sure that he will be able to. And for Ferrari, Charles Leclerc threw away what should have been a top three start by being overly aggressive in the final push lap, and instead he will be starting the race in sixth place. Teammate Carlos Sainz was able to keep it all together, and he qualified in fourth place. So let's now compare the times of the two drivers to see how Leclerc lost out. And when you look at this lap, you can see that initially Leclerc actually had the edge over his teammates, even on the first lap. But then going through the medium to high speed downforce corners, Leclerc can't quite carry the speed as the circuit grip isn't as high as it was for that final run. On his final lap of this section, Leclerc touched the gravel before going off in the final two corners. In the race tomorrow, it will be interesting to see if Leclerc can keep his tyres in check like he did in Spain. And if he can, then I think there is still hope that he can recover to be the lead driver in the Mercedes and Ferrari battle, but if not, then I expect teammate signs to be that lead driver. And finally, for Red Bull, it was pole position for Max Verstappen. Meanwhile, teammate Sergio Perez qualified all the way down in 8th place, and well, that is simply not good enough for him. For now though, let's compare the times of Norris to Verstappen, which is what I know you have all been waiting for. Going down each straight, you can see that Verstappen has the edge over Norris, as the Red Bull is a faster car in a straight line. But then going into the braking zones, Norris gains back the time, which is what we saw in the first three braking zones, which is what we also saw in sprint qualifying. As though we started to reach the higher speed corners, you can see how Verstappen opens a gap to Norris, as the McLaren can do nothing about Red Bull. And then finally, through the penultimate corner, Verstappen carries 12 kilometers per hour more speed than Norris, and then in the final corner, he just can't carry the same amount of speed. And altogether, this led to a lap time difference of four tenths. In the race tomorrow, I expect a good fight between Verstappen and Norris early on, but as the stint wears on, I expect Verstappen to be more secure, and I can see him probably extending that gap as the race goes on. So with that in mind then, what are my final top 5 predictions for the Austrian Grand Prix? Well, in P5 I'm going to go for George Russell in the Mercedes, P4 will be Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, 
P3 will be Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. P2 will be Lando Norris. And yes, I expect Max Verstappen to win the Austrian Grand Prix. But that is what I think. The question is though, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.